It's human nature to want to discover and explore. We're back at the Tech Museum to find out what was discovered by the Islamic scientists. We're here with Ranjana Mera, the resident expert of the exhibit. Welcome. Thank you. I walked in here and noticed that there are subjects all, about all things that people probably forget to think about. So could you tell us a little bit of what's being covered at the exhibit again? So as you enter, we have a timeline which begins from 622 Common Era. Uh, and that's the beginning of the Islamic calendar, Hijra era. And then we go on and there are uh, different times uh, when different discoveries and inventions were made. We move on to great explorers. Uh, one of my favorites, but I have several favorites here. And then across from it, we have optics, uh, Ibn al Haytham's exhibit. In the very center of it, we have astronomy, a very, very important exhibit. And then right here, we are standing in the House of Wisdom, an exalted place. And then we have medicine. Uh, so it looks like we've got a lot of different exhibits we can talk about. So tell me something about the great explorers. I understand that the, the lengths and distances that have been covered are far, far beyond what most people know of. Well, you can cover those if you have a lot of uh, frequent five miles in the uh, today's day and age. But this guy is Ibn Battuta. Uh, he, he's, he live, he's living in Tangiers, Morocco. And in 1325, he decides to go for a Hajj, a pilgrimage to Mecca. And he sits on top of a donkey. Uh, he has a few dirhams, few coins in his pocket. As an asset, he has a good singing voice, and I believe he, he must also have the gift of the gab, <laughs> because he goes on for, you know, uh, towards Mecca, but he decides to visit other places also. In the process, he reaches China, all the way to China. Uh, so wherever there is some uh, Islamic political setup, he decides to visit, and he would hitch a ride with any caravan, go on camel, horse, boat, any, anything that he can get his hands on. And uh, 40 modern countries is what he uh, visits, and uh, 29 years journey, 75,000 plus miles uh, uh, to China and back to his hometown. And it's all recorded in his uh, book called The Rihla by his biographer, Ibn Juzay. So Can you imagine 75,000 miles on a camel, a horse, a donkey, a boat uh, in 29 years? I mean. Today, we can't even take the time out to travel across the world. We're so busy. I mean, I think that'd be such a great learning to share. I'm sure every country along the way, he must have shared some of the things he's discovered and disseminated knowledge even more so. Yes, he visited some 2,000 people, uh, you know, heads of state. He would present himself to a head of state and invariably they'd appoint him as a judge or an advisor because he knows so He's much. Seen He's so, so much. traveled. So tell us a bit more about some of the other exhibits. I understand the optics. We touched upon this in the last, uh, last segment. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that. Okay. You've touched uh, upon a good topic. So this guy is Ibn al uh, Is His Latinized name is al Hazen. So most of the sciences here were layered on top of the ancient wisdom. So sort of fu fusing Eastern and Western science uh, and thoughts. Uh, but al Hazan or Ibn al Hatham, he's a uh, 11th century guy living in Cairo. He's a polymath like so many other scientists here, interested in a lot of subjects, not cornered into a particular subject. And this guy, he first of all, he makes the world's first camera, the first pinhole camera, calls it Kamara. And then after that, he says, this is the way we see too. So he comes out with a theory of vision. Before him, the Greek wisdom was that uh, light comes out of our eyes, and like feelers, touches things, comes back to us and tells us what we saw. <laughs> he turns the whole field of optics around and he says, okay, light travels in a straight line. And then it enters our eyes reflected off of objects and forms an inverted image in the back of the eye, just like camera. And then the brain makes sense of it. And so... That must have been so hard to, like, to challenge the norm. Yes. So if, if it were left to me, I would give him a Nobel Prize in uh, physics. Uh, so how many years ago was this? 11th century, so 1,000. So that's, that's many years before I'm sure anybody ever considered that a discovery of that sort was made. Yes. yes. So let's go now to medicine. And what else, is, what else can you share to our viewers that they should come here for? So uh, there are these uh, 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 inventions, discoveries in 9th century, between 9th century and 12th century, al Zarawi. Uh, if he has to operate on the eye or the jaw, he looks at the problem, 
device is a surgical instrument you know must be telling the metallurgist okay this is these are my specification this is what i want so in the process he did, uh, he uh, devices 200 surgical instruments which are still being used little changes and then uses cat gut for suturing uh, and then there is ibn sina ibn nafis discovers the circulatory system pulmonary circulatory system and we have so much to be grateful for today i mean modern medicine is built upon all these these findings uh, right and then there is al razi uh, uh, Ibn Rushd, all these people are really, really famous because once Europe woke up to Renaissance, their books and encyclopedias that they had compiled, with painstakingly compiled, they were translated into Latin and used in European medical uh, schools for the next five centuries. So Ibn Sina, he became Avicenna in Latin. His book, Kanun Fi Al Tib, Kanun is Law, uh -huh. Al Tib is Medicine, became Canon of Medicine, one of the, you know, one of the 15 most influential books of our world. So imagine if we didn't have that, where would our modern science be? It's very hard to say what's impacted what, but clearly the facts, such findings have been there so many generations before us. I think it's not even common knowledge and probably as, you know, in the earlier show, um, Roque had mentioned that um, it's just not necessarily forgotten, it's probably neglected. So I think there's a lot of that that can be discovered at the Tech Museum. Tell me, what's your favorite exhibit? Uh, House of Wisdom would be my favorite. The exhibit. one we're standing within? Yes, yes, yes. These are sacred halls of wisdom. When I was walking through here, I also saw some machines, mechanical devices for water. Oh, that is one hero for me. Al Jazari, he comes up with these uh, ingenious machines, water raising machines, because water is a scarce and preci precious commodity. He is a guy from Turkey and 13th century guy. And he uh, devises these machines for the first time, uses a crankshaft in conjunction with the camshafts, vertical and horizontal gears, cogs, pistons, scoops. And that sounds a lot like a car's engine. Yeah, so his ideas are being used in internal combustion in Jizza. And he, he, I also call him the Steve Jobs of 13th century because he came up with these beautiful, magnificent clocks, the elephant clock. That's castle, right, we saw that earlier. Yes, and the castle clock, ele elephant clock combines so many cultures, Egyptian, Persian, Indian, Arabic, Phoenician. So when I walked in here, I also saw a model of a glider. So is it safe to say that someone took flight before the Wright brothers? Oh, you must be talking about Abbas ibn Firnas. So this is a guy uh, who's been studying the flight of birds, how they trace a uh, figure of eight uh, with their wings, the difference in pr air pressure between the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing, which gives them lift. And the year is 875, mind you, common era. 875. That's about a thousand years before, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's living in Cordoba, Spain. Nice place to live. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, one day he decides to just do it. Uh, straps himself to a glider, um, wood, silk, feathers, and then jumps off of a cliff. Tells his admirers, I'll be with you shortly. And then glides for a long time. Crash lands because he hadn't figured out how the birds use their tail feathers to land has some injuries, survives, goes on to build other things. He's 70 years old when he does this, by the way. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like a, a recent runner that has broke uh, the world record. Yes, for the 100-year-old guy English. in Canada. Yes. Now yes. Imagine that. This has been going on for millenniums. I bet, I bet we just could continue, continue discussing and find so many more great things to hear. But I say to all those watching, you have to come visit the Tech Museum. The whole history of science is here your parents, your grandparents, the children, come over, discover all the secrets and learnings that Islamic scientists found almost a thousand years ago at our Silicon Valley Tech Museum.